everyone and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast episode 4. Uh, my name is Inga, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Knitting Traditions but on Ravelry it's without the S at the end because they don't allow that many letters. I'm coming to you from uh, the fjords of Norway where I live and work with the uh, my dog now for six months and it's Friday afternoon and on October don't know the date but that doesn't matter uh, welcome if you're a new viewer you're most welcome here everyone's welcome here this is a podcast <clears throat> mostly about knitting if I cough today, I apologize. I've had the flu, or not the flu, the common cold since last Sunday. I tested myself, it's just the flu. And um, the cough is not leaving me alone. So every now and then I'm coughing. Um, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Nothing makes me happier than to see people returning, commenting, and subscribing, and um, just sharing the knitting love, really. Um, I am currently knitting on uh, a baby blanket. If you saw the first and second episode, you saw that I made a gigantic blanket of 270,000 stitches and I had some leftover yarn from that blanket and that's what I'm using to make this one. It's a uh, whole super soft yarn, it's a Danish yarn and um, I think you can order online and the color is rosemary if you want to get the same one. It's 100% wool, it's quite rustic, but it does soften up after washing. And I'm just knitting, hopefully it focuses, it's just garter stitch, it's quite see-through, but it will bloom once you wash it. And it comes on a cone, right now you see I'm almost finished. I'm just gonna knit until it's empty and then I'm gonna call it finished and put it in a box for future either gifts or if I ever have children myself, maybe I'll keep it for that. Who knows, it's not guaranteed. Um, and I think it'll be big enough either in this direction or if it's long enough in this direction. We'll see. And I'm keeping it in this project bag. It has a nice zipper and inside it has um, a division with holes that you can pull the yarn through. Although I never really use these because I don't want to commit myself to keeping the yarn and the project in the bag at all times. I like to be able to take the yarn out and have it next to me. It also has other divisions inside for different things. I just keep breath mints in there really because I always have my uh, markers and scissors and everything in a different separate little bag. Oh and um, it's a bag from Plistre Design. Uh, P-L-Y-S-T-R-E. I'll put it below. She's a Norwegian designer and a project bag maker and she sells different things online. She got really popular I think one or two years ago. She has 
these bags and backpacks and this actually came inside of the backpack and you can take it out and she also sells um, lots of other things like candles and she has a book about how to embroider on your knitwear which I really want to try one day but um, I tried embroidery once and I failed and I've kind of been scared to try it again although I was using a punch needle and as I punched the fabric it kind of just the thread just it didn't want to stay there so it didn't really work but um, yeah this is a new whip that I'm working on uh, I cast it on after the last podcast and it's almost finished um, I don't know if you guys like it that I knit on the podcast or not I, if that's something people like we could make an episode just where it's sitting and knitting and talking about life um, if that's something that might be interesting, let me know below, or if you prefer just the normal, regular vlogging, podcasting, that's fine too. You can also let me know about that. Um, today I just wanted to finish the row, so I'll put this project away. Um, what I'm wearing today, this is, um, an old project, uh, from a book that's called Egustrik, which is like ego, you know, yourself knitting. And um, it's a bottom up sweater with a design that looks like set in sleeves. Like it looks really nice and tailored. Um, I do recommend the pattern. I'm not sure if it comes in English, but um, I like how the fit looks with the shoulders with a set in way. I do regret. <laughs> A little bit my um, my yarn choice because it's very itchy normally I really don't mind rustic yarns I actually prefer them but this is a zero e sweater so it's quite fitted also on the arms it's fitted all the way and it's very scratchy so um, I do have sensitive skin uh, I think a lot of people uh, tend to have sensitive skin, especially on the chest area. And when I take this sweater off, I'm all red here, unless I'm wearing something underneath. I knit it in a different yarn than what the book and pattern used. I used um, the Icelandic wool from Istex that's called Einband. Yes, Einband. Not Einrum, but Einband. And I paired it with a silk mohair to try and soften it up a bit, but it's still, when you feel it, you can feel the little fibers of the einbahn wool sticking out, like a prickly sensation. Um, but I do love the color, I love the fit. Also, I think the neckline was a nice tight neckline, which I think if this had been a less scratchy yarn I would wear this sweater a lot more but I still wear it because I like it so much and <coughs> sorry it's really nice when it's cold outside because the more rustic the more warm right um, I'm drinking a chamomile tea that I got from London when I went there I bought some chamomile tea and some jasmine tea. Um, they're very herby, like they almost have a grass taste, but very soothing. And I have a little bit of honey in there, because the farm that I'm renting this apartment on, they keep bees. They have uh, ecological, is that what you call it? When it's all nature friendly and no pesticides. and all the good things for nature um, so they make their own honey and I bought some from them so I could enjoy it while I live here and I think I'm gonna buy some to take with me when I leave otherwise uh, I cast on another new project because <clears throat> I felt like I was on a good roll with using my stash yarn especially the super soft from holes that I have a lot of. I had a huge green cone and I'm almost finished with it. And I also have a brown rustic one. 
this one. I don't know if you can see the colors properly. Mm. It, it's blowing out a little bit, but it's okay. That's that's pretty much it. More more like this, more warm tones. Um, if it's focusing now. Well, it's it's not a um, solid color. It has like some hints of darker orange brown and then some yellowy hints to it. It's um, the same yarn, really. It's still the super soft yarn, and it's still super super thin, like a um, light fingering weight. So what I've done is that I skeined up a few a few cakes. Of the yarn and then I'm holding it double and originally what I was gonna do was gonna start I wanted to start top down with a high collar maybe a turtleneck that's like folded over brim and I made a swatch so I cast on and did a rib of knit one purl one on three millimeter needles with the yarn held double and then I knit stockinette and I really like the fabric I washed it and you see it's not that airy anymore if you pull it you can see through it right um, and then I did a twisted rib because I wanted to see the effect and I really liked how the texture stayed when I held this yarn double like it just it's not that floppy so you could have like a more structured sweater and then I did a 3.5 millimeter because <clears throat> I wanted to see if I liked <coughs> that fabric as well because the bigger the needle the fewer the rows the faster the knitting right but uh, I preferred the three millimeter uh, texture and uh, for this swatch, I decided I wanted to keep it um, to remember for the future projects because I think I'm going to have a lot of yarn left even though I make a huge sweater now with yarn held double just based on the size of the blanket that I managed to make with a different cone. And in order to remember what needle size I use, I did three yarn overs. Let's see if we can see. I did three yarn overs here on the stockinette. You can see it, right? Three yarn overs uh, on the stockinette. That tells me I used three millimeter needles. And then on this one, I did three yarn overs and then one more over here. And that tells me 3.5. That's my pattern. Uh, or that's my technique for remembering. So I'm going to keep this swatch. I don't think I'm gonna need the yarn and if I do I can always just rip back even though I washed it and then um, I changed my mind because I was um, wearing this sweater and I realized that I don't really want to spend a lot of time on making a sweater if I'm not sure I'll wear it because the turtleneck will be itchy so I couldn't make up my mind, so I decided that instead of starting top down, I'm doing bottom up and that way it will give me time to figure out what I want to do. So I cast on 272 stitches just based on a free pattern with the, with the same gauge just to see and I just knit uh, Knit one, purl one, uh, normal single rib for 10 centimeters, uh, like this, right? And I am worried that it's a bit big, so I'm not sure if this will end up being a sweater for me or if I'll call it a unisex sweater that can be given to my boyfriend or a brother or maybe I'll just have an oversized sweater. I haven't made up my mind. I do love the color though. It's 
very fall-like. See, I think that's a good color representation. It's um, very rustic. It's a lot stiffer than the blanket because it's held double, double and uh, the gauge is a lot tighter. So I think if I was to make a turtleneck that's like folded over, it will like have a really nice, um, it will stay up. Like it won't be floppy or anything. Um, so I was planning on kind of having a similar fit to this one, but now it's getting, it's gonna be a lot bigger. So I figured maybe I'm not gonna knit a plain sweater. Maybe I'll make a um, uh, a cabled sweater. So I just finished the 10 centimeters, and now I've started dividing. I've started dividing the sweater into sections, and these are little stitch markers that I made. If you go on eBay, you can find. Um, a lot of different kind of charms so this was a bag of I think 50 different charms and then I bought these little I don't know if you can see these little loop things and I just used pliers to attach the charms to the loops and they fit needles up to four millimeters and recently I've preferred knitting with that kind of needle, like not thicker needles. And this project I am knitting on my carbons. Um, I, I really like the carbons. I also really like uh, Knit Pro and Haya Haya Charps and Chow Goes. <laughs> I haven't tried all the different versions of the different brands. But um, <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of the interchangeable needles because then you can just change the needle size on the wire without having to knit the whole round. You can just change it as you go. You can change for a longer wire if the work is increasing or shorter if it's decreasing. And they also have connectors. So if you want to try it on, you can just attach one more wire to make it bigger. You can just put it on without slipping the stitches off. <coughs> Sorry. So, I haven't decided what braids I'm gonna choose yet. I'm in between just having some braid sections on the sides with like a honeycomb in the middle, or maybe having two smaller braid sections and a third bigger one in the middle, and then also having the same one on the arms. Um, We'll see, maybe by the next episode I'll have started and I can show you guys what I've decided on because it's a mystery to me as well. So that was my most recent cast on and I forgot to show you guys a finished project last time. My fall socks that I knit for myself. So here they are. It's a self-striping yarn. Um, it's just called Stripey Strumpegal. It's a Norwegian one, so sadly I don't know if you can get it abroad, but there's so many awesome indie dyers out there. If you just go on Etsy or Google and type in self-striping yarn, I'm sure you'll find something where you live. And I knit these top down using a nine inch circular needle on 2.5 millimeters. I did a one by one rib uh, and then I increased two stitches for the heel and now I kind of regret it because this is a bulkier yarn so the needle size with the bulky yarn and the extra stitches made the heel a little bit too big for my instep. Usually that's not a problem, it's the other way around but I don't swatch for socks. Uh, usually I just go on knitting. I make sure to cast on a big enough amount of stitches with the old Norwegian cast on method to make it stretchy for the, for the leg. And then I see what size that gives me and I increase or decrease 
downwards to make it fit. And if it's too big, I just make the foot longer and I give it to a male person. Or if it's tiny and it doesn't fit me, then I'll give it to someone with even smaller feet or keep it for gifts for future children in my social circle. You can always find someone who would like knitted socks because who doesn't like knitted socks? They're awesome. I wear them all year round, really. And I'm keeping them on just a sock blocker, the simplest kind I think you could find. I bought it on um, Loop London. It's a knitting store in the size medium, I think this is. It fits a European size 38 foot, which is my size. And I mean, if you don't have a lot of material, the socks dries faster, right? I also have some wooden blockers, but they have a tendency to kind of s attach to the yarn. Like it has little wooden teeth that kind of get stuck to the yarn. So this is a lot smoother and simpler. It's not as pretty as the ornate wooden ones, but it does the job and I made another pair of socks that I finished and I can show you now just slip it on I didn't block them but these are the into the woods socks by Melody Hoffman who is also known as Bee Mandarins she has her own vlogcast on YouTube and she's a lovely calm person who makes beautiful designs and you should check her out if you like this sock. It's called Into the Woods and I knit it in the gold color from Regia Premium Merino Yak. And I talked about the, the yarn in the previous episode and it's no longer a hoe, it's a finished object. I made two socks. Hey. I really enjoy the slip, or it's not even a slip stitch, but the little pattern that looks like sock, sock trees, little trees on the sock. I can't even speak. They look like little trees and they're super pretty and I enjoy the color a lot. I don't think, I originally thought I would have enough yarn for another pair but maybe just um, a shorty pair for myself. Or if I do a different pattern with uh, uh, maybe some set in heels, like afterthought heels and a different color for the toe and the cuff, then no problem, it'll be fine. And I have one more finished object. You've seen it before. It's the Vertices Unite! It's finished! And it's huge. It doesn't even fit on the screen. Um, so, do you see it now maybe? Maybe I can do it like this. All right, so, <laughs> I'll take you through the sections maybe. Um, section one, this one. This section, is the first one you cast on and the colors are the green dark green color is from Malabrigo it's called a Um I put all the colors in the description box of episode two and three I think and the golden colored stripe is um, wishbone in the color honeycomb yeah then the second stripe is a lot softer than this one because this one is like a sock base and a silk mix and this one has Grenville company um, owl feather in the white color which is 100% merino and then wishbone solo which is another 100% merino in the color what was the color 
Mm, don't remember. Caramel, maybe? Mm. It's in the description. You can go and check it out. And then my favorite section, mm, the brown one, is Medler from Wishbone, another 100% Merino. This, which I think is called Caramel, is repeated here for the fourth section. And then for the fifth section, you mix the Honeycomb Silk Merino from Wishbone with the Grenoil Company's Owl Feather. And then the last section is where I used Malabrigo El Council again. It's green, but it kind of washes out. Let's see. It's a very dark green and it has like cool tones, maybe. And you're supposed to use this color, the fourth section, for the edging, but I wanted to use my favorite, the brown color, and I did. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't be enough because this is a big section and I was worried that I would run out of yarn, but I still have some left actually, so it worked out just fine. And now you can see, I haven't actually washed this yet, um, and I will, but I just wanted to show you guys and I didn't want it hanging wet on the rack before showing you. And, mm, no, I don't have the leftovers from this with me, but it's like maybe this much left, it's maybe 20 grams, 15 grams. Not enough for a lot, but maybe some scrap for a different project. Otherwise, um, I don't have any more projects. I'm almost finished with a baby blanket and I'm starting or I've started uh, the sweater of who knows what. I think it's going to be a cable sweater, but We'll see you next time, right? And otherwise, life stuff. I am on call this weekend. I'm gonna be working until Monday morning and hopefully everyone is staying healthy and safe and don't need to come down to the doctor's office. But we'll see. Um, Last weekend I went to Felda, which is the city where I was born. It's also along the fjord here in the west coast of Norway. And I went to see my cousin, she turned 33. And my boyfriend is currently living in a spare bedroom that she has because he's working in the hospital and I had to move here so he couldn't stay with me. So he's staying there and we had a lovely weekend. I got sick on the Sunday and then my cousin got sick on the Monday and my boyfriend got sick on the Tuesday and then I left them. You know, I'd given them all I could. They got my germs and I got to go back to work. And um, and it's, it's all according to guidelines here in Norway. We don't really have that many um, COVID cases here right now and honestly I'm tired of talking about it so I'm not going to talk about COVID. The weather is beautiful. It's minus two already and we're only in October but it's sunny so I can't complain because as long as it's sunny it's fine and when I drove home on after after screening negative uh, I was driving over the mountains and I took some footage and I think I'll put some at the end of the video so you can see if you're interested. The colors were amazing and it's pretty steep going downhill from the mountain um, and it was frost in the morning but I was driving in the afternoon and I didn't think it would be slippery on the ground anymore because it was like 7 degrees out by then. 
but uh, since the mountain is so steep on the downhill from or going down from the mountain there were some sharp turns that didn't have any sunlight it was in the shade so all of a sudden my car started spinning on the road because there was no uh, grip for the wheels it was just ice and I do have winter wheels on but it didn't really help and luckily I managed to stop just before hitting the rails at the edge at the edge of the turn because it was like a u-turn a steep u-turn so I luckily managed to stop right there <laughs> and then for the rest of the of the passage down the mountain I was driving at like 20 kilometers an hour because I was so scared of slipping again but it all went well I got home safe and I'm not going to be driving over that mountain the next time I'm going to Felda. We have another way that goes around the mountain because in the in the winter time the mountain actually closes because it's like 10 meters of snow and it can't really keep the snow off the road so they close down the road and you have to drive around. It's a longer way but better to stay safe. So that was exciting. Here in this little village nothing much has happened just work and that's what I'm gonna keep on doing I'm sorry that I'm coming to you a few days later than usual but I guess sometimes it's gonna be more of a uh, bi-weekly podcast rather than a weekly if life happens you know sometimes you might get sick or there's a lot of stuff happening that keeps you busy sometimes you don't get to knit as much um, so we'll see how it goes if there's anything uh, content wise that you would like to hear more about just let me know below and if you like this content and you would like to see more please subscribe and like the video and I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're gonna have a lovely week ahead and weekend and that you're staying staying warm safe and healthy and enjoying life and I will see you next time. Bye.